Welcome to the Kit Car History File series where we'll be going through the industry's past. We'll be visiting old marks of long ago, some modern ones, some mostly older stuff, a lot of archive information with photographs and information on the cars they made, the people involved and what happened to them. Hi, my name's Steve Hull, editor of TKC Mag and TotalKitCar.com and welcome to another episode of Total Kit Car History Files series. Um, welcome if you're new around here or if you're old around here. Equally welcome wherever you are in the world, whatever time of the day it is when you're listening to this. Hope it puts a little smile on your face and gives you a little bit of information on a, a kit car from yesteryear. Uh, this episode, we're going to look at... Um, a lovely little thing. Well, there are two versions or three versions of it, actually. Um, well thought of in time, in its time. A quite a, well, very clever idea. Um, probably 30, getting on for 30, 25 years since the last one was sold, perhaps. Uh, but anyway, the car in question is the Minari. Project, very Italian sounding name, um, rather apt given the um, donor vehicles that they use, donor vehicles they used. Company was set up and run by two guys, two nice guys, Sean Prendergast and Andrew Borrowman, who were graduates from Hatfield Polytechnic um, in maybe 87, 1987, something like that. And they wanted to go into, uh, well, they were both engineers, obviously, and they were wanting to become car manufacturers in their own right. They had ideas and they wanted to, to run with them. Set up a base, a little HQ in Sleaford, Slayford, S-L-E-I-G-H-F-O-R-D in Staffordshire. Forgive me if I've got that uh, pronunciation cor incorrect. They're actually, their first project in 1988 was, um, they took over a car we've, we've covered here in a previous episode. A lovely little MCA coupe, Fiat uh, 126 based, two seater, uh, the brainchild of Aurelio Betsy, and um, taken to production by Mike Rutherford of Mako Fiberglass in Chichester. If you'd listened to the Mini Gem history file, we, I, which could have preceded this one, depending on the order we're running them in. And I mentioned four newcomers that GRP, fiberglass and glass fiber were one and the same thing pretty much. Um, and I mentioned that fiberglass was a trademarked word and we try and avoid it. Mako fiberglass was a case in point that we can't really get around the fact that they, they use the word fiberglass in their company name. But anyway, moving on. So they, so the Prendergast and Borman cut their teeth really um, with the M MCA, um, and they added a, um, a, 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 they had a mess around with the monocoque and they had the steer for steel front. They had a little go at mechanically to make it in better. Uh, it wasn't bad anyway, but they they endeavoured to make it better. And I always saw that really as a as kind of a practice free hit, if you will, um, for the car that they were really working on of their own which was the Minari Mark I, or also known as the Club Sport. Very clever choice of... Uh, they, in fact, they quickly moved the MCA on when the Minari Club Sport came along in 1990. Um, very clever use of donor, actually, on that. Um, it did have its, its foibles, but it was very, very clever. They'd worked out um, that there were plenty, and there obviously were plenty, I mean, that's an understatement of the year, really, of um, stricken alphacids lying around in the UK, um, the victim of tinworm. But otherwise, mechanically, very sound. And, oh, my gosh, that Type 105... Um, I know not technically a boxer, but it was referred to as a boxer engine... Uh, absolutely fantastic little unit and was perfect for kit car use actually and 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 that's what they uh, they wanted to prove and indeed that their, their prototype car uh, before they even launched it i think they'd been running around in it and and racked up twenty thousand miles just to prove the concept and certainly uh, it was a concept in, indeed now the, the mark one was was based as i said on 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 alpha third 1.5 1.7 um 
it was it had a very rigid monocoque very clever as i said um doors were quite shallow which could make ingress and exit quite but but once you got in it, it, it was all good really um beautiful car to drive i mean it's lighter than than the sud so uh, for everything that we liked about an alpha sud you could sort of multiply and, and amplify when it came to a club sport um it had an interesting um collection of um parts from the parts bin of various manufacturers for example the citroen ax still donated its um its windscreen and its headlights um, although the windscreen seal was actually from a transit van. Quite interesting, this, and it's one for trivia fans, really. Bonnet hinges, they're interesting. They were actually the hinges of a rear door on a Land Rover uh, S3. Uh, sorry, one, uh, one uh, yeah, S3 Safari model. Uh, <laughs> while the Alpha Sud, uh, the Sprint model, supplied its rear light lenses. So it was all good, really. <laughs> <laughs> so over the next um couple of years they um they did, they sold that they, they i think they only did 13 of them to be honest with you but again they were quickly moving on to the mark ii aka road sport which is the one that sold most and really put them on the on the map for a time in the 90s um it had slightly sleeker body styling Doors were, they were still shallow doors, but they were lowered toward, lower down towards, to join the seals, if you, if you, if you, if you follow. And it also had wind up windows in those doors, which the um, Club Sport didn't have. An option was for hard top, again, which the Mark 1 didn't, the Club Sport didn't have. Uh, there were some changes. Um, and so the, the, they improved the monocoque further, I, I believe, as well. This one had uh, Mazda 121 rear lights. <laughs> and if you can remember the MX3, MX3 quite a, an obscure car now. I don't remember when the last time I saw one of them. But the Mark II version of that donated its headlights. And they had an option, actually, for uh, like shrouded headlights um, covers, which came from a Massey Ferguson tractor. Uh, they also introduced with the uh, road sport the um, option of the um, the 33, Alpha 33, as a donor vehicle. You could tell one of those, uh, but you could tell this 33 from uh, uh, an Alpha Sud based Mark II, uh, because the, the the 33 had a version had a, a different dash, which was a more rounded style. I also remember, I mean, I enjoyed driving the Minaris. I had some great fun in them. Beautiful car. Loved it. And I was, a, I was an Alpha fan. And, they, and that, around about that time, I had a, a, an Alpha 33 sport wagon, which I loved. Needed a piano tuner to keep it in tune. But um, when it was running, it, it ran well and I loved it. I really loved that car. Um, so I was always a fan. They, um, I do remember, though, the Mark II... If, if you were new to that car, in, say, a passenger, it stumped lots of people as to where the door release catches were on the inside. They're actually embedded in, um, embedded in, in, in the body behind the seat, which was quite tricky to find. But I guess they work well enough um, in, in, in action. They probably sold about 130 of those. Um, and, and, yeah, and it certainly... It certainly worked very well. I think it's worth mentioning some more for trivia fans. The MX-5 Mark One gave up its windscreen wiper mechanism. Um, so that will please a lot of people that do like to know such minutiae when it comes to that. Um, and then we move on. Then they, 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 they then... I don't know if um, Prendergast and Borman really enjoyed dealing direct with public because they certainly appointed uh, a company called Chame Chameleon Cars um, towards the end of, of their stint with the Minari, run by David Rutherford and John Anthistle. Nice guys, concentrated on fully built versions, uh, although I think they could also supply kits towards the end. Uh, and by, But by the year 2000, it, it really was all over, sadly. 
with probably about 142 cars. But that wasn't before they did an RS an RSR, which was a track version, lightweight. Four of those were made. And this one was basically a road sport with everything that's bolted to it, taken off it, in as, in as much as no windscreen. The doors were bonded into place. There was no glass, side glass, ultralight GRP, or, or for the Brave and the peop- and people with deeper pockets, you could also order a carbon fibre body. I don't know if anyone did that. When Chameleon ceased trading, I think Rutherford went on to work as an engineer for Phantom Automotive, I believe. Uh, Chameleon packed up. I think they were based in Solihull from memory. I went to their little premises. It was quite a nice operation they had. They were very nice guys. Uh, Arden Automotive took over. I'm not sure how many they actually did before the Minari project went... Uh, went well, things changed for Borman and Prendergast. Two things came out of the Minari, I think while working on a Mark III and realising that um, Alphas were becoming a little bit scarce in, in, in the UK, even in donor form. They knew that uh, another donor was needed, so they identified the Subaru Impreza, which, fair enough, the configuration of the engine is is the same, if not much more powerful in certain models. So they decided to work on that. Um, I think they... I'm not sure if Borman and Prendergast went to work for a company called uh, Delfino, but they they were supplied engineering mouse to them. But certainly what could have become a Minari Mark III evolved into the Delfino Ferrochi, which I think means fierce dolphin. And that was in around about, well, 2002, 2003. Um, and then, of course, th- th- this is where it gets a little bit convoluted. That project, I think, in turn... Um, became indirectly associated with Adrenaline Motorsport and the Mattia, which, of course, was 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 um, Scooby-based. And Adrenaline had previously bought the rights to the um, uh, Mark II Road Sport. And interestingly enough, the Mark I, I'm not sure what happened to that. I think it was, I don't know what exactly happened, but it was subject to a legal battle for a time. Uh, but then I think it ended up at a college somewhere who were using it for their engineering classes. But I'm not sure what happened to that thereafter. Um, the Mark II ended up with uh, a lovely chap, uh, now departed, called Paul Featherston Harvey, a very keen kit car enthusiast and a very nice guy from Cornwall he set up a company called Peninsula Sports Cars that acquired ex-Robin Hood founder uh, main man um, it's a new snake project which was a Ford Mondeo based co- Cobra approximation and he also bought the rights to the Mark II the, the, the road sport, Minari road sport he offered some spares uh, I think he was on with building a demonstrator and his intention was to put it into production. But sadly, uh, Paul passed away in 2017 and those projects have, have been on hold ever since. <coughs> um, so there we kind of have the Minari story. The car is a child of its time, but a lovely kit car, certainly in Mark II um, road sport guys that had some very clever brains behind it. Very nice people too, as I mentioned. Um, and um, a noteworthy kit car. I mean, any kit car that sells over 140, 150 um, examples, kits, fully built cars, etc., is, uh, is a car that has, has sort of paid its dues on, on the kit car scene. And... Uh, Minari certainly belongs in, in, in our history file. If you've enjoyed this this uh, episode, I hope uh, y- you uh, um, would consider, if you got this far, you might consider hitting that like button because that helps our channel immensely. It means that it's got a chance of appearing in um, more car enthusiasts' YouTube feeds. I don't mind it being random because my own feed, I don't know about you, but I end up with... 
I'm not particularly interested in boating or or, or, or fishing or uh, such other pursuits, but they tend to they tend to end up in my feed. But I tend to find them very enjoyable, actually. So that's no problem if you have been looking for a fishing channel and you found our channel. Great, you're welcome. Um, but I think um, I'm told by people that know that if if you hit that like button for us, it will help us, and I thank you greatly for that. And likewise, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It's completely free. And you'll be notified every time we drop a new video. Uh, these these videos are done in association with Neil Winnington's In Win Motors channel. Please consider going to um, visit Neil's, Neil Winnington's channel there. And doing the same and subscribing and liking. Many thanks for listening and I look forward to welcoming you here again for the next video. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.